2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise? And who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. We are going through the news at 8.35 with Chris Agabusi and Dawn Neeson. Really good to have your company this morning. Dawn, this is a huge relief because I ate loads of chocolate yesterday. Oh. And apparently it's very good for you and may help you lose weight. Right, OK, well... <laughs> or is this another April Fool? Well, I'm just taking everything with a pinch of salt this morning. I don't think this one <laughs> is. Yeah, I don't know if um, I trust it's in, it. Who knows? Uh, this one's in the mail and I think I've spotted their, their April Fool. But chocolate, if you've stuffed your own body weight in uh, Easter eggs over the last few days like yes. I have, Me? Um, yep. chocolate may help you shed weight and it could boost your brain and protect from age-related cognitive decline. Oh. This but is... If it is it's it's not, it's not the chocolate we all know, it's vile tasting chocolate. The yeah. proper dark, healthy stuff, eh? Yeah, oh, oh, cocoa. Yeah. You're not helping oh. here, mate. Yeah. It's not um, the same. This is a, a study uh, from Eastern China which has found that, uh, um, as Eamon's quite rightly pointed out, somewhat dully, that <laughs> the healthy chocolate that hasn't got a lot of fat and sugar in it uh, contains things that can, when eaten, actually potentially prevent... Um, um, various problems going wrong, and it won't it, everything in moderation, people, um, and it won't help you. It won't make you put on weight. And this study is in the journal Functional Foods. Um, it also suggests it could be used to treat uh, treat e stroke and depression. Do you know, it's a good, nice story I'm reading here. Um, Nick Witchell, the royal correspondent for the BBC. Um, 70 years of age, and he had a retirement party over the weekend. And the nice thing, do you remember he and pr then Prince Charles? Yeah, oh, God, I, I think, remember that, yeah. And, and Charles said, um, you remember he was miked in Switzerland and he didn't yeah, realize it was Yeah, with the boys when they were young. And he said, I can't bear that man. Mm -hmm. He said, oh. he's awful. He, did, yeah, he, did. Yeah. he really he did. is. Uh -huh. Well, he sent a tip uh, for a video at Nick Witchell's going away do. Uh, a nice, nice message That's between nice, the two of them. isn't it? I well, mean, that, that was nice. pretty famous, wasn't it? Because the boys yeah. sitting either side of him on the Can't skis. Can't bear like. him. Can't bear him. I know. Oh. Said it for but anyway, happy retirement, Nick. Very, yeah, very no, nice. exactly. Good, good well stuff. deserved. Um, Great. Have a good, I've got some more good news about chocolate, basically. Oh, yeah. Someone sent me this at the weekend after I confessed to eating yet another egg. Um, chocolate comes from cocoa, which is a tree. That makes it a plant, so chocolate is basically a salad. It's basically vegan. Yeah, exactly. At so, that rate. Yeah. Very good. So uh, go for it. Chris, this one's caught my eye. Uh, Gen Z, Gen Z, however you'd like to say it. Yeah. Uh, the rudest generation ever, yeah, according so, so, to Daily Mail. Yeah, so grandma, um, she remains anonymous. She's 80, she's complaining about her kids. Gen Z, for those who don't know, between 12 and 27 at this moment in time. I, I wanted to kick back again in this story initially because I've got a couple of youngsters myself. I've got a young lady, she's 13. Aww. And I've got a young lad who's 16. So they're square, but they're, they are Gen Z. But they'll be very polite because you would yeah, they are, be they, tough they, on they, them if they weren't. They, they, are very they are very polite. Her, when she says they're, they're not polite, what she's talking about basically is that they are self-centred. That, that she's a grandma, for example, she tells a story of her grandson who's mid-twenties, going to work, promised to come to see grandma. She's in all day, she's creating her, her food for him and he can't be bothered to turn up because he's He's had a hard night and a hard day, so he doesn't turn up. And, that, you know, she's emailed him, she's texted him, she's done all the sort of thing to make sure he's there, and he doesn't turn up. Which, and I get from Grandma's point of view, because when we were children, there's no way, there's no way you would, you know, not respond to, to, to Grandma. Mm. Um, and then it also goes on to say that, you know, Gen Z, they're prince and princelings. The whole world has been revolved around them, quite solipsistic. They live their life in their phones and their tablets. Just Not... get, get straight, Chris. What, what, what age group is Gen Z again? Just... Um, 12 to 27 is right. Gen Z. Okay. Um, but also, what I want to say in their defence, they are also probably the most egalitarian, neuro, neurodiverse, environmental friendly. Mm. Um, they are also accepting of all, all sorts of people. You know, 
when I was at school, oh God, I, mean, no, I won't even go there. You know, because, because we, we, it was such a different world. We were so, so now I'm focused and they're very open-minded. So yes, I, I do get it. I do get that they can be hard to get through. You know, they are lost in their own little world. I'll just teach them some manners, honestly. No, but they've got manners. They're, they're, they've got wow. manners. If you, if you speak to them, they're very polite. You know, they, they respect the difference. But yes, of course, grandma is expected to turn up. They've not turned up because they're in their own little world. Do you, think they res- rude. do you think they respect elders? No, I, I, mean, I think there's a Chris huge... Chris is doing a good defence there. I think there's think? a huge generation gap. There's always been a generation gap issue, but I think it's getting bigger. I mm. think there's a, an enormous lack of respect now between younger folk and, and, and older folk, and, and it works both ways. I mean, we're sneering at them, you, you know, you're lazy, you work shy. You know, that story we had the other day, Ellie, where it's like, you know, lots of them think it's perfectly fine not to turn up for a job interview and not let yeah, the company have know. Have diva days. And, yeah. yeah. And, and but also, at the same time, you know, we're, we're all millionaires, we own our own homes, we'll never own our own homes, all that sort of thing. So there's more hatred and division than ever before. Mm. Mm. I think it depends on how you've been raised, because we've been raised, so my granny is the matriarch of our family. Great. She's the boss. Yeah. yeah. And what she says goes, and that's the way it is. That's very but, traditional. But, yeah, it's very traditional, but that but respect I think, is nice to get. That's yeah. very traditional. But I don't, I don't know how many other families are like that still. I think that is quite a traditional way of We were brought being. up to respect our elders. Y- mm. y- but, but now, you, yeah, but, but now with generations, you, you, have, you have to earn a respect. It's not naturally given. Because, and I don't agree with this, but we have put so much on them that they actually do believe that their opinion is as important and as right as your own, Mm. despite the fact that you've got 60 years on this world and they've only had 12 or 20. Mm. So that's the challenge you're dealing with. You have to earn the respect. You have to dialogue with them. And and, and they will follow if you lead and they can trust your example. I just don't think that's the way it should be. Um, you know, when I think when I worked with really senior, superb broadcasters like John Stapleton or Desmond Lyne mm. or whatever it is, doesn't matter what programme I'd be doing, if I'd been given the lead, the lead billing or whatever, I would just turn and say, John, you're the boss, you're in charge, Des. I mean, Des Lyne is a god. Why would mm. I ever think that I could in some way supersede him no. uh, uh, on those things? And I find that there has to be an awareness that some people with their age and their experience are better than yeah. you and you're just going to have to Because the difference, them. Eamon, is you, were, you weren't brought up to be entitled. You weren't treated as a little prince That's where it. everything you did was right. You're wrapped up in cotton wool. You actually were, were brought up the old-fashioned way, and that's the mm-hmm. difference, and then you respect your elders. But on the other side, you would, you, if you were working with a digital native, mm. you, you might want to succeed, but they may have an insight mm. into the technology and how it operates. OK. Uh, Chris, I just got to cut across, you know, because we've got Nick 